So maybe you've just learned about the product rule already, or maybe you're just about to learn it, but you're curious if there's a geometric way of looking at this rule instead of just manipulating some algebra and calling it a day. Well, there is. As the name implies, the product rule concerns how to find the derivative of a function that is the product of two functions. That is, if h of x equals f of x times g of x, then how can we find h prime of x using the derivatives of f and g? Whenever you're multiplying two mathematical objects together, you can try to use area to understand what's happening. This is useful when expanding and factoring quadratics, and it will be useful here when we're multiplying two functions together. So we'll start with a rectangle whose dimensions are the value of f and g for any arbitrary value of x. This means that the area of the rectangle is h of x for any x. Next, remember that we can write the derivative using an alternative notation to h prime of x. We can write it as dh over dx, where dh is the change in h, or value of the function, and dx is the change in x. This is a consequence of how we define the derivative as the slope of the tangent line. This notation is a little more cumbersome to write, especially when multiple functions are involved, but when doing proofs like this, it's quite invaluable. So our goal here is to find dh over dx. That is the derivative of h at x. We can visually represent the change in h, or dh, by increasing the area of the rectangle. We can increase the length of each side slightly. So the increase to the side f of x is df, and the increase to this side is dg. These values will become infinitesimally small as dx, the change in x, decreases. The combined area of these new rectangles, then, is the change in the area of the rectangle. So it's the change in h. This rectangle is df times g, and this other rectangle is dg times f. Finally, this small rectangle here is df times dg. That means that dh equals df times g plus dg times f plus df times dg. But we want dh over dx, so we need to divide everything by dx. So looking at these three terms individually, this first term becomes df over dx times g, and the second term becomes dg over dx times f. What about this third term? If you're starting to understand how these tiny, tiny changes in x and y work in calculus, then you might already see what will happen here. To demonstrate it, we can use one of the mathematician's favorite algebraic techniques, multiply by 1 over 1. In this case, by dx over dx. That allows us to write this last term as df over dx times dg over dx times dx. But remember that dx becomes infinitesimally small. It tends towards zero. That's the whole point of the limit definition of the derivative. We're getting the slope of the tangent line, not a secant line. So this last term will itself tend towards zero, which means it becomes infinitesimally small and doesn't influence the value of this expression. Therefore, we have the derivative of h as df time over dx times g plus dg over dx times f. Alternatively, we can write h prime of x equals f prime of x times g plus g prime of x times f. Okay, so I lied. There was a little more algebra in this video than you might have liked, but hopefully you can see how the algebraic justification for the product rule relates to this geometric conception of multiplication as area. This isn't just fancy tricks. We proved a very deep and useful result about derivatives using geometry and algebra together.